When it comes to certainties in watches, one of them that comes to mind is when you're looking at a Grand Seiko, chances are you're gonna be having an amazing dial. And with this SBGA 413, we have exactly that. Now last month I did a review of the SPGH 269 with a red piercing dial. And after posting that video, I just came to the realization of how much fun Grand Seikos are to actually shoot and produce videos of, as well as seeing the feedback that you guys had in terms of comments and viewership made it that much more clear to me that I have to cover a lot more of these in the future. But since that SPGH 269 had a high beat caliber within, I thought it would only be fitting to cover a Grand Seiko model containing a spring drive caliber and ideally show a model that hasn't been overdone by reviews like the Snowflake. However, when thinking this, I expect it to just cover a watch that might not be on the same level as a Snowflake in terms of its dial finishing. But I have to say, this SBGA 413 certainly does more than hold its own, but perhaps even a watch to consider before pulling the trigger on the brand's flagship model. Now this particular model was released as a part of Grand Seiko's Four Seasons collection, a collection that dedicates one model design aimed to represent the feelings of each of the seasons, with this SBGA 413 representing the spring equinox, matching the changing cherry blossoms that have become synonymous with Japanese spring. Before we get too much into the details of this dial and its symbolic connections, let's take a high level look at the piece. This reference SBGA 413 comes with a case size of 40 millimeters, a case thickness of 12.8 millimeters, lug to lug of 46.5 millimeters, lug width of 21 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters, has a sapphire crystal, and within a spring drive caliber 9R65. Now when looking at Grand Seikos across the board, I think maybe more than other watches, they have their own uniqueness in allowing them to differentiate from other models within the brand's catalog, even within the Elegance Collection and the Heritage Collection uh, from Grand Seiko. But all of them are executed with a level of case finishing that is really unmatched. And this Grand Seiko SBGA 413 certainly follows suit here, coming with a 40 millimeter case and a relatively contained distance across the wrist of 46.5 millimeters lug to lug. The piece follows a familiar case finish format that despite being familiar, is never tiring to look at. With a mixing of polishing and brush finish across the case and lugs, with the stark bevel executed using their precise hand finished Zeratsu polishing that outputs a mirroring reflection as it moves under the lights and along the side of the case. And when looking at the plethora of just videos and photos online covering different Grand Seiko models and their just exceptional case finishing that comes with them, I think one thing that does get lost a little bit and doesn't translate as well in terms of photos and videos is just how well these watches actually wear on the wrist and how unique they kind of are. And basically what I'm referring to there is it just needs to be expressed how light this high intensity titanium construction of this watch makes it wear on the wrist. In fact, when measuring this watch with the bracelet, all factory lengths included, it came in with a weight of an insignificant 3.5 ounces that for reference is 30% lighter than that of the common Seiko Sarb 033. The bracelet is certainly a key contributing factor in this respect in keeping this weight down, featuring mostly a brush finish with polished outer portions of the center link meeting along the underside at a signed two button release clasp. In addition, this SBGA 413 also sits favorably both on the wrist with its moderate thickness of 12.8 millimeters, with a good portion of that thickness coming as a byproduct of a feature of this piece that really works heavily in its favor in terms of its design with a beautiful dual curve sapphire crystal that really only can be provided its due justice when examining close from a side angle. But overall with this piece, you're getting a watch that has still has quite a bit of presence in terms of size without really even encroaching on the boundaries of a relatively small wrist, all while wearing incredibly light that will have you sometimes even forgetting you're even wearing a watch. Well, that is until you glance down. Now I have to be honest here, when looking at all of the press photos for the Four Seasons collection, I was honestly a little bit on the fence in terms of what to think of this watch, given it looked very pink with its dial. But now seeing it in person, I have a much different perspective on it. As previously mentioned, this watch was made with encapsulating the themes of the transition to Japanese spring, with the pink tint of the dial looking to match the cherry blossoms laying on top of the water's surface, described in Japanese as hainai kata, translating in English as flower rafts. 
The dial itself is a bit deceitful in how it appears in comparison to that of the press photos, but in the best way possible. As in photos, the pink tint of the dial looked very pronounced when in actuality, it's quite subtle and even depending on the light, looks even more silver or white, really actually matching that of the cherry blossoms of this changing season. When examining the dial closely, you begin to fully appreciate the textured finish that I can't say I've ever seen exhibited by any other manufacturer. The dial showcases small directional surface areas that run in alternative directions, appearing similar to intentionally contrasting brush strokes of a painter on an open canvas. To put it simply, the dial surface is spectacular. At the 12 o'clock, the familiar applied Grand Seiko logo above the printed text, the three o'clock, an outlined date window, and at the six, the reference of the spring drive caliber within. At the seven, we have the traditional design cue for most spring drives on the market, with some exceptions of them being on the case back more as of late, with the power reserve indicator with fine ribbing within. And as the part of the dial where I would say the pink is more noticeable, while visually displaying the 72 hour power reserve of the spring drive caliber within. Matching the highly reflective elements of the case, the dial follows suit with applied indices and Dauphine samurai sword style hands, showcasing finely executed edges, all which work in tandem to create a reflective eye-catching effect that instead of cheaply grabbing attention like other watches on the market do, is done with a level of elegance that draws you in and then ultimately keeps you once you get lost in a trance, thanks to that perfect sweep of that spring drive powered second hand. Within the SBGA 413, we have the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Caliber, the 9R65, a movement that actually lives up to the high expectations that are seen on the front with the dial. And at the time of the announcement of this watch in 2019, Grand Seiko, it, it was just a big year, celebrating a special year for the manufacturer, marking 20 years of the Spring Drive, a movement that is really nothing short of groundbreaking in terms of its technical advancements, matching a course accuracy with the combination of using mechanical components. And I will link to a video in the description that provides a 3D animation of how this all operates in more detail. But looking at the back of the finely decorated movement, we have a clear view of a rotor. So we do have mechanical components here. However, Grand Seiko replaces the traditional escapement with a tri-synchro regulator that utilizes mechanical power of the unwinding mainspring to the glide wheel to create subtle electrical power activating a quartz oscillator and then sending a precise reference signal to the integrated circuit within. This reference signal ensures that the speed of the glide wheel does not deviate from optimal accuracy, only applying magnetic energy as a brake to the glide wheel only when deviation occurs, which then in turn feeds into the gear train, powering that clean sweep that you'll see on the second hand. The movement in addition to its impressive technical feats is also beautifully finished, mixing a uniform wave groove finish throughout and having polished edges as well. The 9R65 movement has 30 joules, has a power reserve of 72 hours, which is also gonna be represented on the front with the power reserve, has an accuracy of plus or minus one second per day, or plus or minus 15 seconds per month. So whether you're somebody who cares about the internal specs within, or simply just wanna get lost in the clean sweep of the second hand, the spring drive caliber within delivers unlike any other movement on the market. I try not to sound like a broken record when I'm talking about a watch or watch brand, but when it comes to Grand Seiko, a lot of the same things that just come to the table are just present every single time. We're getting fantastic finished cases, amazing executed dials, as well as state-of-the-art movements within. Can they still improve? Certainly. I think the bracelets and removing the emblems on their case backs to see their actual beautiful calibers are two areas of easy change and areas of improvement. However, with there now being a gradually embraced idea of Grand Seiko delivering a great product for the money and their up presence in the US, I expect to see more ground made up by the brand in the coming years. And I think the SPG of 413 and their entire Four Seasons collections and a lot of the recent models that we've seen released for the US market particularly have been signs of great things to come. But I think they're just gonna continue to be a brand that never comes off as pompous, but instead sustaining a reputation of always keeping the eyes on the details. All right, guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Also, I wanna hear your thoughts here. Looking at this watch, I and mean, this is probably one of the more photogenic, if not the most photogenic watch that I've ever reviewed on my channel. How do you think it stacks up to the Snowflake? I'd love to see comments down below. I think this is a very almost deceiving in a good way 
uh, type of dial here with just how it looks in different lighting conditions. Also guys, if you have other Grand Seiko models or other watches in general, I'm trying to diversify the watches that I'm covering on this channel. Leave comments down below about other models that you'd like me to cover. Also, if you're in the market for any watches, watch straps, hit the links in the description, teddyballstar.com, as well as Bob's watches. All that really helps support the show and what we're doing here. Also follow me on Instagram because I'm taking some amazing photos of watches. It's a great way to stay up to date with giveaways as well as what's going on with me and when new videos drop. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.